So OpenAI and Sam Altman just dropped a bombshell statement that could change the entire AI industry. And honestly, if what they're saying is true, the AI race might already be over. But why? Well, it all comes down to copyright laws and how AI models are trained. And in this video, I am going to break it all down. What's happening, why it matters, and what it means for the future of AI. First, let's talk about why this issue exists in the first place. AI models, like chat GPT or image generators, need vast amounts of data to learn. These models don't just magically develop intelligence. They're trained on trillions of text and image tokens scraped from the internet. This includes books, articles, artwork, code, everything. What data was used to train Sora? We used publicly available data and licensed data. So videos on YouTube? The problem? Much of this data is copyrighted. Companies like OpenAI didn't ask for permission before using it. They argue that they're using it under the concept of fair use, that their AI models are learning patterns, not directly copying works. But content creators, including writers, artists, and even journalists, argue that AI companies are profiting from their work without giving anything back. This is where the lawsuits come in. Several major AI companies, including OpenAI, are facing legal battles over their data gathering practices. And now, OpenAI is essentially saying, if these lawsuits don't stop, AI progress in the U.S. could grind to a halt. Their angle? If U.S.-based AI companies can't freely train on copyrighted material, China and other nations will pull ahead in AI development. And that's a scary thought for policymakers who see AI as the next big battleground for global dominance. Their solution? The U.S. government should step in and create policies that let AI models train on copyrighted content without restrictions. They're saying AI doesn't just copy, it learns, transforms, and creates something new, which fits within the fair use doctrine of copyright law. They're also pushing the economic angle hard. If strict copyright rules make AI training too expensive or legally risky, us companies could slow down or even stop innovating. That means fewer jobs, less investment, and an overall weaker AI industry, while competitors in other countries, who might not have the same restrictions, race ahead. It's a smart move. Politicians care about national security and economic strength, so OpenAI is framing the debate in a way that makes it hard to ignore. Whether it works or not, though, depends on how much influence copyright holders and content creators have in pushing back. But there's another side to this. Content creators argue that AI companies have built billion-dollar businesses by using their work without permission, credit, or compensation. Think about it. You're an artist who spent years perfecting a unique style. And now, with just a text prompt, AI can generate images that look just like yours in seconds. Or you're a writer who spent months crafting a novel, only for AI to summarize it or mimic your style without even mentioning your name. This isn't just about hurt feelings. It's about livelihoods. If AI can instantly replicate an artist's style or a journalist's writing, what happens to the value of human creativity? That's why we're seeing a wave of lawsuits. Visual artists, authors, and even major publishers like the New York Times are pushing back. Their core argument? AI companies should either pay to license content or be restricted from using copyrighted material altogether. Otherwise, we're looking at a future where AI models are trained on the hard work of human creators, without those creators getting a cut. But here's where it gets interesting. Some companies, like Adobe, are proving that AI can be built in a more ethical way. They're training their models on licensed data and paying artists for their contributions. This shows that an alternative is possible. So the big question is, if Adobe can do it, why can't OpenAI? And more importantly, why won't they? The answer might come down to money and speed. Paying for data slows down development and increases costs. Something AI companies trying to dominate the market don't want. This battle isn't just theoretical, it's already having real consequences. We've seen major lawsuits, like Getty Images suing Stability AI for using copyrighted images without permission, and some courts are siding with content creators. Meanwhile, OpenAI is making moves to protect itself, signing deals with companies like Reddit to license data legally. That's a sign that they see the legal risk and are trying to cover their bases. But the bigger question is, what happens if AI companies lose in court? If the legal system cracks down, AI development could slow significantly as companies scramble to find new, legally approved training data. This could make AI a more closed, centralized industry where only companies with deep pockets can afford the necessary licenses. 
On the other hand, if OpenAI and others win, it could set a massive legal precedent. AI companies might be able to train on anything without compensating creators. This would be a nightmare scenario for artists and writers, but a dream for AI developers looking to push innovation forward at any cost. One thing's clear. This isn't just a legal fight. It's a battle over the future of AI, creativity, and who gets to profit from the digital age. But here's the twist. What if none of this even matters in the near future? Ilya Sutskiver, OpenAI's co-founder and former chief scientist, recently talked about test time compute, a concept that could completely change how AI learns. Right now, AI models work through pre-training. They digest massive data sets. And once training is done, they operate with that static knowledge. But test time compute flips the script. Instead of relying on massive pre-trained datasets, future AI could just think longer and become smarter dynamically. This could be the breakthrough that AI needs to move beyond its current limitations. If AI models could improve their reasoning abilities on the fly, rather than relying on brute force data absorption, they wouldn't need to scrape the internet for millions of examples anymore. Jan LeCun, one of AI's leading researchers, has made a similar argument. Right now, AI is still incredibly inefficient compared to human intelligence. Let me give you a very simple calculation. A typical large language model is trained with something on the order of 20 trillion tokens, right? Or 20,000 20, billion tokens. A token is like a word, more, more or less. A token typically is represented on three bytes. So 20 or 30 trillion tokens, each on three bytes, that's about 10 to the 14 bytes, a one with 14 zeros behind it. This is the totality of all the text available publicly on the internet. It would take any of us several hundred thousand years to read through that material. Okay, so it's an enormous amount of information. But then you compare this with the amount of information that gets to our brain through the visual system in the first four years of life, and it's about the same amount. In four years, a young child has been awake a total of about 16,000 hours. The amount of information getting to the brain through the optic nerve is about uh, two megabytes per second. Do the calculation, and that's about 10 to the 14 bytes. It's about the same. In four years, a young child has, has seen as much information or data as the biggest LLMs. And what that tells you is that we're never going to get to human level AI by just training on text. We're going to have to get systems to understand the, the real world. And that understanding the real world is really hard. If test time compute and other reasoning based approaches work, we might reach a point where AI doesn't need massive amounts of training data at all. That would change everything. No more legal battles over scraping copyrighted content. No more fights over who owns training data. AI would simply improve dynamically based on real-time interactions and problem solving. And that leads to a big question. If AI stops relying on massive datasets to get smarter, will this entire copyright debate just become a relic of the past? Will today's legal battles seem like temporary roadblocks in AI's evolution, problems that won't even matter in a few years? Right now, we don't have the answer. But one thing's for sure. The future of AI is shifting faster than anyone expected. And whether it's through legal battles or breakthroughs in AI design, the industry is heading for a major turning point. If you found this breakdown interesting, make sure to stick around for more deep dives into the world of AI. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.